I'll be honest, when deciding to review this game today I was expecting to pick it up, play it for a few hours to get a feel for it, and then be done with it. So consider my surprise after dismissing this as being just another racing game on the system, it actually delivered a lot more than I was expecting. Now don't get me wrong, it is essentially just another racing game, but it offered just enough hidden surprises which I think may pique your interest. Indie Racing 2000 was developed by Paradigm Entertainment and published by Infograms in the year 2000. This was a North American exclusive title, and I can see why that makes sense as when you consider that Indie Racing has minimal interest outside of North America at best. However, if you were listening carefully, you'll notice that the game was developed by Paradigm. That's the same paradigm that made the excellent F1 World Grand Prix N64 games, which are arguably the best simulation races on the console. Also the same paradigm of Beetle Adventure Racing, which is arguably one of the best arcade races on the console. Spot the theme there. Indie Racing 2000, whilst initially appears to be just a bargain basement title from the name alone, actually contains much more than you may have ever anticipated. The game modes consist of your standard single race, championship, multiplayer, and perhaps the most interesting is the Gold Cup which I'll come to later. The core game is the championship mode which sees you pick one of the 20 different drivers and vehicles based on the 1999 season and work your way through the raceways to eventually become champion. It is your standard racing championship mode in that sense, but with the full Indie League license and a mix of day and night races, it does slightly mix things up somewhat. The tracks are naturally dull to most people as they pretty much consist of ovals, and it wouldn't normally have made the racing that much fun. What adds things up however is the AI of the drivers. With the expansion pack support and such a prolific studio handling the development, you know full well this is going to be a smart racer, and indeed it is. None of the 19 drivers on the track appear to follow set race paths, and they all seem to act randomly. It's not uncommon to see huge pileups caused by an AI driver's error, or smart and intelligent drivers changing their race line to take advantage of things like possible slingshots up ahead, using your car as a launch pad. You can also tweak and customise your car before the races, which gives some customization in the game, but it's nothing on the level of the Formula 1 titles. One thing that does take practice is the game's handling. It's the hypersensitive style, and at first you'll likely struggle to make it through a few laps at a time without constantly crashing into the sidewalls, but be patient. After an hour or so you will get to grips with it, and you'll find that you'll enjoy the ability to quickly dodge an accident up ahead with cat-like reflexes, and it gives you an adrenaline rush to do so. One area of the game which held back on was the visuals. This isn't a pretty racing game by any stretch of the imagination. What it does do well, however, is the game's sense of overall speed. Even with 20 cars on the tracks and multiple collisions and events taking place, the game doesn't really seem to have a skip a beat. I was surprised to see that other reviewers of the time mentioning slowdown during big crashes, because I personally didn't witness enough of this to warrant commenting on it. It's also worth noting that for those who like more serious racing, then you can turn on race damage, and this directly impacts on your car and so it's pretty cool at times to see parts of your car fly off all over the track when you crash, and it helps to add to the overall aesthetic. Now I mentioned before that the Gold Cup is by far the most interesting thing about the game. This is a game mode where you start off racing midget cars, which are almost like oversized go-karts, and then you must work your way up through the championship to unlock higher capacity cars and ones with higher features, before then moving on to higher class modes such as sprint cars, formula cars and so on. This adds a cool amount of progression into the game, and if anything it should be the mode that you start off with, because it will ease you into the handling of the game with the easier and slower cars, and it will develop your skills as you progress. Rounding off the overall games package is the audio which is passable, but honestly it's nothing more than your bog standard N64 generic rock music. It fits the pace of the game perfectly, but it doesn't really bring anything else to the table, and in some cases it masks the game's audio effects, and the effects themselves are also fairly generic. They give off a nice rounded sound to the motors and engines, which is all that can be expected really, but the crashes do have some nice bass and depth of sound to them. The worst area of the audio though is the game's commentary which includes an extremely limited number of lines, 
and it's used too infrequently that you'll often forget that there's even any dialogue in the game at all. What is here though is surprisingly clean and clear, and it's some of the better quality speech I've heard coming from the N64. And so it's just a shame that there's not more of it, and that the writing hadn't been better. Indie Racing 2000 is a game which I feel many people have overlooked simply by the name and box art cover. I too am guilty of this, but don't get me wrong, this game isn't what I'd class as a hidden gem and I wouldn't even recommend it to most people. But if you are a fan of this type of game, and you are perhaps in need of a break from titles like F1 World Grand Prix, then this could really pique your interest and it could be the break that you've been looking for. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know of any games from your past that you've overlooked because of either the name or the box art, and then you've gone on to play them years later and actually ended up really enjoying them. And as always, sound off in the comments section down below, and until next time, cheerio!